Hello, this is Super User. My name is Wahuru Matapeng. I'm a developer advocate with Linode, and in this video, we're going to be doing databases. So, databases form an important part of modern applications because ultimately they determine how we manage, update, and retrieve information that we've stored relating to users and activities on the application. This can have a huge impact on the user experience because if it takes longer than it should to retrieve information, your application might be slower than it should be. So, choosing the right database for the right application is incredibly important. And in this video, we're going to be talking over two types of databases, and that is relational and non-relational databases. These two databases aren't mutually exclusive, so one isn't better than the other. It's just about choosing the right database for the right application. So let's get into it. We are going to start with relational databases. These are databases that use tables to store information. Relational databases are characterized as being very strict and structured and having predefined relations. So we're storing information in multiple tables. So we need to know the relations between all these tables and all the tables need to have a link to at least one other table. So the question always is, how do you know what the structure of the database should be? So what the tables should be named and what the relations between these tables should be. A good start is by actually saying a sentence that defines the core functionality of your application. And once you've said that, you'll actually see the relations in your database start to show up. Let's go over an example. So let's say you're building an online store and in your online store, people can make purchases and view products. A simple sentence that defines the core functionality of our online store is saying a platform where users can make orders for products and pay for them. A simple sentence but from the sentence we can already start seeing the relations between the different types of tables in our application. So we need a users tables, a products table and orders tables and we need to also be store whether a payment has been made for a product or not. So this is an example of what your table will look like. And from the sentence, we can already actually also see the relations. So users are the ones who make orders. So every order has to belong to a user. Now we've seen an example of relational database. Let's look at some advantages of relational databases. The first advantage of relational databases is data integrity. This means that we can actually make predefined rules and enforce them in terms of how data is stored in our application. A good example of data integrity is when we say that every product has to belong to a user. We can enforce these rules and the relations between them. So that means that no order can be made that does not belong to a user. The next benefit is SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language, or just SQL for short. SQL is a language that we use to interact with the database. This allows us to write queries to update, retrieve, and delete information in the database. SQL is relatively easy to learn and allows us to write queries that retrieve information from one or multiple tables. And some examples of relational databases are my personal favorite, which is Postgres, followed by the most popular relational database, which is MySQL. There are a few others, but these are personally my top two. The second type of database we're going to be looking at today are non-relational databases. These are databases that have no predefined structure. So with every database that you get, there's no set in terms of what type of data you have to store and where you have to store it. So this gives us flexibility. It means that if there's any new requirements, any unforeseen requirements in our application, we don't, we're not limited to the predefined structure that we initially said as we would with relational databases. Some types of non-relational databases include document type databases. These are databases that follow a JSON-like structure to store information, and these are fairly easy to adapt because they look, do look like JSON, and a lot of people are already familiar with JSON. It also means that in one type of document, you can store vast amount of data, and in another document may not have a lot of data because there is no structure. And next up is key value databases, and these databases actually just store keys and their actual value pair. For example, you can store a password and the actual value that the password is. And next up is cache databases and these are databases that store cached values you don't necessarily want to update them you just want to retrieve information that you know won't change in a while and you just cache those values so you don't have to make requests to the database again Earlier on, we discussed how we would store information for our online store in a relational database. And now we're gonna look at what that structure would look like in a non-relational database. 
As you can see here, we're using a document type example. So this is a JSON structured document. And you can see that we can only not just store information about the user. We can also store our orders and order products in this one document. The lack of structure with non-relational databases means that it's really easy to expand new features and just store new values. However, it does also open up a few other questions. So for example, in our current structure, we're storing uses their orders and the actual order items and their prices. Let's say if an item were to go on sale, that would mean that we would need to go and update that item for every user. That would be quite tedious and we may mitigate this by actually having separate documents that actually store products and then linking them and then writing a query to connect one document to another. Maybe storing products for an online store doesn't bring out the best parts of NoSQL databases. However, a really good use for NoSQL databases is for big data. NoSQL databases in their infrastructure are outlined to deal with vast amount of information. And for our online store, let's say for instance, we want to start it to implement a recommendation system. We then have to track down user activities on our application. We want to store what device they were using, what products they're looking at, how long they're looking at those products for, are they liking those products, are they bookmarking, adding them to the cart. We want to store all these different types of activities and as functionality grows, we're storing different types of information about user activity. As requirements grow, we're just, you know, it's constantly expanding. This is a really good case for big data because our users could be on the platform four or five times a day. It's a lot of activity. So this is where we can use uh, NoSQL databases. And this is a really good use of NoSQL databases. We're storing vast amount of data that doesn't always have a great structure. So you can see that our application can actually make very good use of these two different types of database. And it all depends on what we need it for, what the feature requirements are. And that brings us to our conclusion. We've covered two types of databases, relational and non-relational, which one to use when the strengths and weaknesses of each type of databases. And I hope that that helps you make a decision about which database you're going to use for your business. My name is Sawahudi Mumadlapeng. I'm a developer advocate with Node, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in future tutorials.